My name is Antamana Dukley, and I'm the president of WAFIA, World Aid Fostering Education and Agriculture. Hello, my name is Tatiana Smith, and I am the director of community outreach. I am responsible for organizing events as well as volunteers. Our organization, WAFIA, it's a nonprofit organization, 501c3, tax exempt from the federal government. Our mission, we're compassionately dedicated to improving the lives of the world's most impoverished people. So we want to get to the people that really need the help most. I would agree. I think what our mission is basically to do is to, to change lives. We're here to make an impact and we're here to be involved. We went to the refugee camp and we came across this lady that she was paralyzed. She couldn't walk and we were you know, she's not an older person, she's she's a middle-aged lady, and her situation can be fixed. But because of the fact that there are lack of resources, medical resources to help her, it was very hard to, um, she doesn't have a wheelchair, she doesn't have any crutches to help her walk. So, um, we were able to, to provide a little bit of resources, financial resources to, to her, but that's not why, she, she needs a lot more than that. So, they don't have any, medical facility in the refugee camp and that's the thing we're trying to do. So we went to the Borea refugee camp and this refugee camp was founded by the UN. There's a lot of refugees back back for you know back then but now people are you know repatriated the, there's still thousands of people in the refugee camp. And these people they don't have any resources, they don't have any help. So we went through the camp and just kind of visited people where to live and we came across this lady and the kid and we were told this kid was bit by a snake and she couldn't see she was blinded for a while so it was just hard it was hurting just to see um, a 10 years old kid that couldn't she couldn't see because you know of med lack of medical resources so it, that's just that's just it was just heartfelt uh, we came across this lady as well. We, we came across a woman in the village, uh, middle aged, maybe about 30 years old, um, who also kind of had a lack of medical attention just due to the resources being provided in the village. Um, you know, this young middle aged woman had basically became ill. Um, she didn't have the resources to kind of, um, you know, control this illness, um, and it kind of resulted in her being paralyzed. Um, and now there's even more of a lack within this village. And so it's hard to, it's very disheartening, as you were saying, to witness this and see, you know, mothers and children um, experiencing things that are kind of, you know, life changing, I'd say. There's a school, elementary school, that needed some school supplies. We were able to provide those school supplies, book bag, and books to these uh, kids. We also went to the refugee camps where um, there's no school. These people are trying to send their kids to school. They don't have any schools. So we were able to provide some type of school supplies to those people as well. And we were able to go in the community and look at their, just see how they're living and how they're getting the waters and, and how their uh, everything else affect them in the refugee camps. The kids, all these kids trying to go to school, they don't have any means of going to school. And you see these kids, they're all the, our generations. So being able to help these people out to go to school, and, and that, that's, that's the most important thing to me. So when I see these kids, they're hungry, they want to go to school, and I'm not being able to help them it just hurts. So I think that's the, the, the highlight of all of it, the kids going to school. I mean, as you stated prior, I mean, we've had success in the villages in West Africa. Um, we've gone from seeing children with nothing to seeing children, you know, holding books and being proud of something. Um, so, I mean, I think it was most successful, you know, within the village, um, you know, providing these supplies that were once just not available. Um, I think there's a lack of resources, you know, in, in Africa specifically. Um, and because of, you know, you know, the lack of involvement by the UN, I think a lot of children are going without. So I think the highlight of my success specifically um, would just be seeing children, you know, being able to, to prosper and grow um, and educate themselves. Right. Based on the visit that we paid to Borea Refugee Camp, we were able to go in the community and saw that their lack of drinking water, they don't have the pumps that they, 
that were built by UN. A lot of those pumps are broken. They don't have those pumps anymore. Uh, the schools, they don't have any schools for the kids at all. And uh, even food, they, they're not getting food from the UN anymore. They don't have any means of resources. So they go to the neighborhood, to, to the ref, to the other villages to, uh, to con just contract, individual contract to get food from those people as well. So it's very hard for those people living in the refugee camp. So as far as we talk about the drinking water for these people, we talk about uh, school for the kids. There are hundreds of kids out there right now they are not going to school. So, and that's, that's something that we, we're really trying to address and fix. Right, I think we want to expand resources. We want to expand education. We want to expand um, healthcare. I mean, I know it's not easy and I know it's not going to be overnight, but I feel like, you know, they really do need um, resources. They need food, they need water. You know, these are basic necessities um, that people are being denied and people are not being given. And I think that our organization can really, really help provide those to them. I think what we can do better uh, we're trying to reach out to a lot of people, volunteers, that can get involved with this organization. Uh, the more people that are involved with this organization, uh, the word's gonna spread around. We're gonna get a lot of help. We're gonna get a lot of things done, you know, just getting more volunteers involved. I, I, I would agree. I think that we need, um, you know, to outreach. We need community outreach. You know, we can't do this alone. You know, we do need volunteers um, who are willing to help. Um, and I think that we also need to, you know, become better at maybe creating a community of involvement where it doesn't feel like a task, it kind of feels like something that's being done. Right, and, and we have, uh, we do have our website, wafia.org. We have a lot of information on our website. Uh, we do have a Facebook page as well. So um, if you go on those pages, you can see some of the works we're doing and, you know, as far as getting people involved, we have a lot of people that have gotten a chance to travel overseas. We've got a lot of people that really want to help. So we're trying to reach out to those uh, volunteers to get them involved as well. I think if we can do a better job involving people and people and, and to volunteer at that time, it's going to help us a lot. This is solely members based. When we have events, most of our funds are coming from our members and from our volunteers. Um, although it is appreciated, um, it doesn't quite substantiate what we do need um, you know, to, to be successful. Um, but I think we do need more to support what we are trying to do. With your help, we'd be able to provide these resources to the individual so that they may sustain a better way of life. Show them how to take care of the pumps and hopefully get more volunteers involved. The, this, this, these people, want they want to be involved. There, it's just not a handout. They want to be able to take responsibility of their own life. They want to make, they want to be able to make their own food. They want to be able to uh, get their own water. So these people are very much eager to be able to help themselves out. So uh, if we give them the tools they need, uh, they're going to be able to help. They just do not have the resources to uh, maintain those equipment. You can learn more about the organization and what we do on our website, wafia.org. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, wafia.org. Yeah, we website. have events, we have any upcoming fundraisers, any updates that you may need are available um, on wafia.org. Um, as you stated, we do have an event coming up soon, so to kind of keep updated on that, the website would be a great tool to utilize. We do update our website frequently, so there's always an update to uh, kind of look out for. We are having an event coming up soon, and I would love to see you guys there. Hopefully you guys come out and get involved. Um, it's going to be really, really cool. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you guys at our next event. Together, we can make a difference.